From the beginning, the images we have created have stood like myomarkers on the road of human progress. What once was is now because artists made it so. They captured a moment and made it eternal. Where did they get such power? Well, it was given to them, passed down through the ages, master to student, each building upon the other. John Stobart, one of the most accomplished artists of our time, says, I don't think the greatest works have yet been done. And it's true that only if the secrets are given to yet another generation. The first secret is this. It is not in the hand, it is in the eye. Follow us and we'll show you that once you learn to look at the world differently, it becomes a different world, one in which nature becomes the greatest teacher of all. In some places, like Westport Point, Massachusetts, it seems that there's a subject to be painted around every corner. Here, John Stobart teaches the critical lesson of finding the vanishing point in nature. Well, we're here in Westport, at Westport Point, one of my very favorite places in New England, uh, on the tip of the peninsula between Fall River and New Bedford. And the street here is where all the whaling captains' homes and the fishermen used to live, and they've all been beautifully preserved. Here's the, the post that the, the Cape Cory, the whale ship Cape Cory, was anchored to the post here and uh, sat in this beautiful harbor. What a wonderful place. One of the things I love about being out in nature is the smell of the fish here. And the, the reflections are all moving. Uh, the, the flags are fluttering, and the seagulls are swooping down. And it's all so alive. Last year I went to school, I shouldn't probably say this, but the yeah. last year I went to school, I was absent 150 days out of 180. <laughs> I was fishing That's all the time, yeah. That's mom. It was in the blood, you know. Yeah. My dad, he was a, he was an old fisherman, rigger, yeah. old rum runner. Yeah. They were just stubborn old timers and uh, they had boats that did about five knots and uh, that was it. Uh, you know, lobsters in them days, my father used to get uh, eight cents a pound for lobsters. 10 cents a pound for swordfish, and it was plentiful then. You know? I bet, yeah. So back in 1969, we used to go out and set uh, 200 pots and get eight, nine, 10,000 pound of lobsters. Today, you, you haul the same amount of pots. If you get 100 pound, you're lucky. That's how much has changed. Gosh. But it was good days then. That's it was good days. That's a, that's a good story. I come back to Westport Point, I'm amazed. It's, a, it's the land of a thousand subjects. And everywhere I look, there's something fascinating. The small buildings around the, the little port area and the captain's homes all the way up Main Street make it absolutely fascinating place to, to come and look for a subject. Between each house, there's a view. Absolutely wonderful. Oh, look at that. Everywhere you look, there's a painting. There's one. Gorgeous. And here we are, coming up to this little flag. Oh, look at that. Now this is good because it's got the texture of the, the picket fence. The window is reflecting light from behind us. We've got a lovely view into the distance at the entrance to the harbor. The boats, the tree resolving the left-hand side, perfect, perfect composition.
Wow. I love that. Now this is a perfect lesson in perspective. The lines are all pointing to the horizon, the horizon point, the road, the fence here. Lovely. Perfect. I always like to come back to this area because it has a sentimental value in a way and that it was the first place that I came back to paint uh, on the spot after many years in the studio. So here I'm going to put in the horizon line just a little bit below halfway and see how that works. I may have to move it, but I don't think so. Anything that's exactly halfway will draw the eye to it in the wrong sort of way. Now the way to find where the horizon line is, virtually it's at the eye level of the viewer. There's a vanishing point to where all these lines of the buildings will go to. The line of the roof of the building and the line of the base of the building, they will meet in a certain point and I'm going to put those in very quickly. I'm going to choose the vanishing point to be about there because I need the tree and I need the barn to be here and the, the edge of the house. And so I'm going to have the vanishing point about there. I don't want to have to move that too much. Uh, and let's see how that works. Here is the roof line of the, that lovely little barn. And I want to put that cupola on the barn. And the base of the barn is right there. Now already I'm going to push that into the middle more and have it there because I want this to be not too high. At this point I'm just feeling my way around and finding where I want it. That's the shadow under the edge of the barn and the shadow under the side of the barn. There we are. There we are. This road that I'm sitting on is sloping down to the water's edge there. And what's happening with the road is that the road has a different vanishing point because it's sloping down to the buildings that are on it. And I'll just explain that right now. The road here is doing this. There's the, there's the edge of the bottom of the barn going to our vanishing point there. But the road, because it's sloping down, actually has a vanishing point about there. So this surface, if, if the vanishing point of the road was there, wouldn't look as if it was sloping down. It's going down almost wrongly. And this goes down to there. So all these points now will point to that. There we are, there's the road. That's the tree there. There we are. Oh, that's going to look wonderful. Very, very simple composition, this. The reason that this is simple is that it's just a basic shape. Cezanne said in some of his writings that everything that you see is a, a combination of three basic shapes. Uh, one was a cube, a sphere, and a cone. And here we can see this happening. This is a, this is a, a cube right here, this building. It's virtually just a square block. The tree, on the other hand, is more like a cone almost an inverted cone, this tree. And the bush at the end of the fence there is almost like a sphere. And the boat itself, the little boat there, which I, I really like, uh, that little boat is, is a combination of a, of a sphere and, and a cone. I 
I'm just establishing the tone of this, the density of that uh, water there. Here I'm uh, putting in the, trying to get the color of the sky pretty well exactly as I want it so I don't have to change it too much. What you have to realize here is what's happening is that the, the blue at the top of the canvas here, at the top of our view, is it's got more blue in it. As we get to the, the bottom of the, the sky where it meets the horizon, it, it goes into a grayer blue and it's that dome effect that you have to get in a sky. What the beginning painter should realize is here that we're, we're taking a, a three-dimensional view here and, and putting it onto a two-dimensional plane. Now we can compensate for the, the lack of that third dimension by creating the illusion that this is more of a dome than it really is. Now the way we create this illusion is to exaggerate certain effects. Now the fundamental point is this, that the essence of painting from nature is that we're transferring the three-dimensional scene down to two dimensions. The magic lies in the rediscovery of that third dimension. And if you're going to use a photograph that's two dimensions, you've already lost it. You can only do this by being outside and looking at nature and doing it from life. Richard, how nice to see you. So, um, oh, this is Richard Kugler, who is uh, curator of the New Bedford Whaling Museum. I think the first time I ever came to Westport was uh, when I came to the museum to see you, and, and you very kindly brought me down here to try and persuade me, I think, to do a painting of the Cape Cory. And right. it took me all of 20 years before I actually did it. You know, of course, I think that the barn you're painting uh, was the barn that was owned by the man who also owned the whale ship that you were to paint later. I know that because he also happened to be my great-grandfather. So when I was a child coming here to see my grandparents, uh, uh, there were the jaw bones of a right whale laid into the ground here. So maybe you want to add those to the painting, too, <laughs> even though you can't see them. <laughs> you move the boat, uh, you can put the yeah. jaw bones in. Yeah. Richard, one of the most wonderful things for me as an artist about this whole peninsula between Fall River and New Bedford is that it, there's so much working farmland going right down to the shore. And I know a lot of artists in years gone by have chosen this particular peninsula because of that. Uh, and they've, they've painted a lot of the famous art, American artists have painted. That's right. Uh, this, and this low-lying coastal landscape yeah. around here has attracted yeah. them. It's a paintable place, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. Absolutely fabulous. As the sun moves around, everything here will pretty well stay the same except for this side of this building here. It's going to be in shadow in, well, maybe half an hour. Now we see the shadow creeping down, it's there now. And I've got to decide whether to have that in complete shadow or not. And I may not make that decision until I see it in complete shadow. But for now, we'll put in the tone of what it appears to be right now. Now when the sun is on something white like this, it looks very white, and it's white paint, and it's white paint in the can. 
But when the sun's on it, it's casting a, a very yellow light, slightly tinted, tilted towards orange, slightly. put in this white road, which is down from white. It's not absolutely white. There we are, perfect. See, just putting that warm color on there has suddenly made that look much brighter. part of the fence. There. Just blocking this in and making sure that it goes to our second vanishing point here. There's the bottom edge of it. The road going down, and here it is here, and there's the top edge of it. Now there's the, see where my brush is pointing now, exactly to the vanishing point of the road, right there. Now I'm going to change over to the other side, and we see where the vanishing point of the road is, where the tip of the brush is, that's the vanishing point of the road. The vanishing point of the house, however, is there. And all those lines, see how they vanish to that one point on the horizon line, right there. The wall starts right there. Lovely bit of reflected light in that wall, just at the side there. There we are. Nice bit of reflected light on the wall. And ending at the round bush there, which is that shape. And then the, the gate, part of the gate there. There, perfect. Yes, that's going to work beautifully. Now, painting from nature is about infinite choices. As the sun moves, or as the wind blows, or all these things are happening in front of you, and you have a wonderful amount of choice. Now, one of the choices that I knew I'd have to make earlier was whether to have this side of the barn in complete shadow. And I really like it better with the side of the barn in complete shadow as it is now. For the artist that comes out and paints from nature like this, I don't know how to explain it really, but there's so many things happening there's a part of your mind that, although you're not conscious of it, all this stuff is going into your mind and, and, you, and you're growing in your experience. And the next time you do it, this, will, this experience will be there on the shelf. And it all happens without you really knowing it. Uh, but it does happen. And you will notice the improvement in your work. That's what is the main point. I'm moving this little boat, upside down boat, to the left because I didn't like where I moved it wrongly. And this is one thing that you have to do, keep changing it. Now I'm uh, trying this 
shadow where it was. I'm trying it with the light on the side of the building to see if the effect of light hitting the building is greater with it showing than without it showing. Now I'm drawing in the shingles and I don't care whether I've drawn them over the windows and uh, everything because in a, just a very short while it'll all be resolved. As I sit here uh, doing this sort of work, I think how lucky these people like, um, like Larry Bird, for instance, when he does one of these three pointers from outside the circle there, um, everybody gets up and, and cheers and laughs and screams and hollers. But when you do your, your deft brush stroke and just make the whole thing work, it's absolute silence and you've got to realize that when the audience sees the painting, finally, they will then get that thrill. But they don't know why they're getting a thrill, but if you do it right, they'll get it. What I want to try and, I want to get another point across here is that you, when you start, you want everything to be a little bit out of focus. Uh, you want to get these basic shapes in, and then as you work along, it's almost like a camera lens being out of focus and then s gradually coming into focus. I found the greatest difficulty in, in painting trees. This is, I think, probably one of the most difficult things in painting is to know how to handle that. And I think all the other artists that do this will agree with me. And I think what you do, you have to look at uh, other artists' work. You have to look at the, the old masters and some of them painted every leaf. And yet others, particularly more into this century, they did it in a more impressionistic way and the tree looks more like a tree and it looks more alive when it's done that way. So you, you have to pick up these tips from the old masters and the new masters uh, so that you can get this right. There we are. This is where drawing comes in. You've got to learn how to draw. The proportion of the tree we don't want to make a mess of this. And it's one of those things where you wouldn't want to have to go back and do this again, because then it involves the sky color and, and all the rest of it. You've got to get the feeling of using that brush and the dry paint underneath it the drying paint underneath it to uh, create the illusion of leaves. Once you start to paint every little tiny leaf, you've blown it. I'm not going to be putting very much more in this. Hi, girls. Yeah. Boy, you do good. What's that? 
You like that? Good. Good. Well, it's a nice little scene, isn't it? Looking down over the river there. Do you live here or are you just visiting? No, I live Us down there. Us two are just visiting. Oh, really? We're visiting her because she's our cousin and we came down for her first communion. Ah, very nice. Well, this took, you know, about two and a half hours to do. You think you can do that? No. No. Have you ever liked to try painting? Ever? I do. Mm -hmm. do. My father does too. Have you ever heard about perspective? No. Not really. Well, everything you look at is in perspective. The lines all go to a horizon line in the distance. And what we do, we establish the horizon line like that. And if, if I'm going to draw a cube here in perspective, which would be almost like a house, uh, I have a, 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 a vanishing point. Let's say that's going to be, well, we have two vanishing points, one right at the either side. And if the cube is in the, in the front of me here, and the edge of the cube is towards me, then each side of that cube will vanish to the vanishing points, will go to the vanishing points. And this is how to construct things. And then there's the edge of the cube that's before me, and then we, we can have a, a, an edge there, and an edge, there's the back two edges. And that's how, and these, all the lines that are parallel to the ground on the side, if you put windows in like that, they'll all be like that. But all these edges will go to that. That The bottom of the windows will all line up with that. You see, it's very simple, really. And then you can put a roof on like that, and that will go to that point two. Everything goes to the point, and that's very, very simple, basic perspective right there. Um, like on a painting, you see how the painting's done, but I don't know how you know where it, the um, checkpoint like is supposed to be. The points are. That's a good question. The the way that you know where the horizon line is that it's at eye level. Your eye level is the horizon line. See that horizon line is straight there, and that's where your eye level is. And it's choosing a point on the horizon, and the fact that I've chosen this point. Over there on the horizon, where all the lines on this building end up at. You see that slope there? It ends up at the point right there. And it's because I've got that right that this looks real. OK, I get it now. You have to remember just the three things. One is that as things go to the distance, they get smaller. See the little yacht in the distance? If that was here, it'd be big. And you are going to remember that the horizon line is always at eye level, and it's always level. And that all the lines that are parallel here will converge to a point on the horizon. And that's quite easy to remember, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it is. You'll remember it. <laughs>